Now to discuss one of the biggest weeks in federal politics for some time. We were joined earlier from Canberra by the Minister for Trade, Craig Emerson, and from Melbourne by the Manager of Opposition Business, Christopher Pine. Gentlemen, welcome to Late Line. Thank you. Good to be with you, Emma. Now, this is a question for both of you, and perhaps I'll start with you, Craig Emerson. How in good conscience did you leave the Parliament this week for a six-week recess without having resolved this critical issue of asylum seeker policy? We need a majority of the Parliament in order for legislation to pass, and we could not get that majority. Uh, we tried everything. Uh, we won't agree to a policy of towing boats out to sea into Indonesian waters. That would destroy cooperation with Indonesia. It is uh, very dangerous, and we won't agree with that sort of policy. But we did try various options. We said we would reopen Nauru. The coalition is saying, no, you must not proceed with Malaysia because it's a non-signatory. By the way, Indonesia is a non-signatory, but it's all right from the coalition's point of view to tow boats back to sea into Indonesian waters. Somalia, on the other hand, is a signatory nation, so the coalition's OK about a processing centre in Somalia, but not in Malaysia. So it reached levels of absurdity. We couldn't get the Greens to support any position. We could not get, not get the coalition to do it. Uh, we don't walk away from this with any joy, with any pleasure, and that's why we're setting up this committee of three eminent Australians to advise us before the resumption of Parliament of any other options that might be available. Christopher Pine, we, we hear now reports this afternoon that Tony Abbott has said that regardless of what this committee of three eminent Australians comes back with, your party won't support them. Is that correct? Uh, well, not quite. What Tony Abbott has said, and I read what he said in the transcript, is that the Coalition knows that there is a policy that does deter people smuggling and it worked from 2001 to 2008 when you might remember there were about four and a half thousand illegal arrivals in 2000 and then uh, there were basically none. There was a trickle from 2001 to 2008 and then when the current government lifted the Howard government uh, laws around border protection there's a spike such to the case that in the first six months of this year alone there have been 5,000 arrivals. Last year there were 4,500 arrivals in total for the year. So we know that there's a policy that works. It's the temporary protection visas at its core and its offshore processing and that is a policy we will definitely support. And Tony Abbott said well, it's, we, he will certainly meet with uh, uh, Chief uh, Air Marshal Angus Houston and others uh, but uh, we know that there is a policy that works and the government knows is a policy that works as well, but they simply won't adopt it out of the Prime Minister's vanity and pride, which is a great pity. Christopher Pine, how does the policy of towing boats back to Indonesia work? Well, it worked in the Howard government. About six boats were towed back by the Navy into Indonesian waters, into Indonesian ports, uh, and none of them uh, met uh, any of the tragedies that uh, we've seen in the last week. And, of course, it's a significant deterrent. It's not something you do when uh, it would be unsafe to do so, but where it's safe to do so, uh, it is a significant deterrent. They say that in relation to Malaysia, it's a non-signatory, but so is Indonesia. And you just heard Christopher saying, yes, that's what they want to do, tow boats back into Indonesian waters. He says where it's safe to do so. The Navy says it never is. They will scuttle their boats. And what happens to the people who are towed back to Indonesia? Well, they Christopher can't be Pine, processed there because ask, they're a non-signatory. Let's ask the question. What does happen to asylum seekers when they're towed back to Indonesia? They are processed by the Indonesian government. But the they Indonesia can't be under Indonesia your legislation. But Indonesia is be. not a signatory. Hang on. We, they are dealt with by Indonesia under they their can't laws. Be. Now... They can't Excuse be. It's me, under, the, under your me, laws, Christopher, they cannot be. It's a not a signatory to the Refugee Convention. They no, cannot no, be. Craig, it's impossible. It's, well, am I going to be allowed to have sure. a go? Or he's just going to keep interrupting, Emma? No, no, please. Please give us your response, Christopher Pine. Thank you very much. Uh, when a boat leaves an Indonesian port... Uh, and it is towed back by uh, an Australian naval vessel. They are the Indonesian government's responsibilities because they have left from an Indonesian port and they're on Indonesian boats. Therefore, they're, they're then taken care of by Indonesia, like they any of the other be. asylum seekers that are, in, uh, that are in Indonesia. I'm not saying they're taken care of under our laws. I'm saying they're taken care of in Indonesia. And it happened in the Howard government at least six times. No boats were ever lost at sea, uh, and it was a very significant deterrent. But 
it's not the most important deterrent. The most important deterrent was the temporary protection visas, and they worked. And if the government had wanted to this week, they could have compromised with the, with the coalition. Tony Abbott rang the Prime Minister at one o'clock on Wednesday to talk about this, and she wouldn't even take his call, and she is yet to speak to him this week. So this doesn't sound to me like a Prime Minister who's negotiating in good faith. She's never asked him to come around to the office to talk about it. She hasn't rung him this week. She, she stood up in the Parliament. Him. She hasn't even returned his call. She's used megaphone, megaphone diplomacy to demand that Tony Abbott uh, come to her table, when in fact he rang her and said he'd like to talk to her about it and they wouldn't even put the call through. Christopher says firstly that uh, the coalition policy worked and it can work again. The coalition policy cannot be implemented under the legislation that they are seeking to put through the parliament because Indonesia is a non-signatory. My second point is this. They won't go to that Indonesia. The, well, they, they get towed to Indonesia. Now that's a I different mean, for goodness sake. Term, and they, not they, not they cannot be processed there. They cannot be processed there. So what do they do? They should be processed by Australian. We've never said well, there should be a processing centre in Indonesia. But they cannot be processed well, under your legislation. With, uh, I don't know. They perish at sea. How are they dealt with, uh, well, dealt with when they go back to Indonesia if not well, processed? What happens to them? Because, Emma, they're Indonesian they, they disappear. responsibility. But oh, they're not Indonesian. But you know they're not Indonesians. So once they're they Indonesia's get back... Indonesian's responsibility, not Australia's And that is the end. But that is the Australian end of cooperation. Vessels, excuse me, sorry, Craig Emerson, but sure, it would be Australian sure. vessels bringing them to Indonesia. That's right. So don't Australian... Doesn't the Australian government therefore then take on some level of responsibility? Well, in the Howard government, we did it and oh, it worked. Yes, and the we Indonesians it, have and said they will not cooperate. They have said to us, they have said to you, Christopher, to your side, they will not cooperate in interception of boats if we start towing boats, if Australia starts bowing, towing boats back to sea in Indonesia. But Craig